So I want to show you how you can use IXL in second grade. Um, so here I have IXL math, and I have second grade skills. Um, so to get here, we just go to the learning tab, and that pulls up just the skill plans here. So if I just click on second grade and see 100 or 316 skills, I can actually look at these skills, right? There's all of those skills. There's also games that might be beneficial to your second graders here. And let's say I want to assign addition strategies two digits. Break apart one, uh, a one-digit number to add. So let's click on that. And I can get a feel for what kinds of questions I have here. I can also start a group jam right from here and I can share the skill in Google Classroom. So I can select whatever classroom I want and share the skill just like that, which is pretty useful. Right, let's go back to our skill plan. Uh, let's look at our language arts skills. I'll go back here to second grade, 238 skills. And look, there's 238 skills, there's 73 videos, and 31 games. If I just click on videos, it will show me all the videos that might be useful. Hey there, friends. Today we're going to your age, like at the end of the world. So that's a great uh, lesson launcher. And again, I can start a group jam from here. And these are remediation uh programs that I can do if I don't feel like I can handle what's happening here. If I go over here to the New Jersey State Standards, I can actually see uh, the IXL spotlights here, or I can go into the New Jersey State Learning Standards. I can click on second grade. These are the math standards adopted in 2023. Here's language arts standards adopted in 2023, second grade. And let's say I want to do the words uh, with a given long vowel. I can click on that. And again, I can start a jam from here, or I can share that skill using Google Classroom very, very easily. I also want to show you textbooks because there's a lot of textbooks here, like Envisions. Two point Envisions messed up. We'll have to figure out. You have to see which one is ours. I think this might be the one that we're using. But you can find our textbook and assign skills based on the textbook. One of the things that I hear from a lot of uh, students and even teachers is that IXL is just not fun. It's not uh, engaging or it's not sticky or it's just it's not something that kids like using. So I want to show you underneath the My IXL tab right here, these engagement tools because I think these engagement tools will make IXL more fun and more interesting for your students. The first thing I want to show you is Group Jam. Group Jam is uh, a fun a way to use IXL and it's similar in a lot of ways to Kahoot um, but you can do a little bit more with it and a lot of this stuff is already pre-made for you. So I'm going to do a group jam here with a group of 8th graders that I put together so I'm just going to select all my students and then I'm going to select a skill. Now I already went in and pinned a skill plan. I pinned the student learning standards for grade 8 in social studies. Those are the New Jersey student learning standards. So this is right on uh, what we are doing. So I am going to pick 6.1.8, uh, America in the world by the end of grade 8. So I'll pick that, and I will select Revolution and the New Nation. And we are going to select Site Evidence to evaluate. All right. You get the idea. And the section, I prefer the early republic to Jacksonian democracy personally. And we'll do Washington's presidency part one. Okay, so here I am. 
as you can see, I don't have any students that have joined. That's okay. Um, but here is the question. Again, this is based straight off the New Jersey student learning standards for social studies. Um, this is a skill that they must know by the end of eighth grade. So if we look at this, Washington officially became president at his inauguration, the ceremony that begins a new presidency. The following painting shows Washington's inauguration. The painting was created in 1867, many years after the actual inauguration took place. It is not historically accurate. But the painting does show how the artist may have believed Americans felt about Washington's inauguration at the time. Look at the labeled parts of the painting and follow the instructions below. So each student gets this whole thing on their computer themselves, and then um, they get to decide. Match the visual details from the painting to the idea it could represent. So Washington was a strong military leader. So if we look, flags, applauding Native Americans, banners. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to do banners because, look, banner showing Washington's success in battle. Many countries celebrated Washington's inauguration. Flags meant to represent other nations. People who had a long history in the land were glad that Washington was becoming president. Native Americans, applauding Native Americans. Then we click move to review. All right, and then it shows me that we got everything right. And here's, um, again, that's the explanation. And then here are the correct matches and it tells you why. Now, let's say that was too easy. We can select harder, we can select same level. Now we can do this on the board together or the students can do this on their own. So you see, this is basically a Kahoot that was built right in front of your eyes based off the New Jersey uh, student learning standards. I highly, highly recommend you guys check out this feature. It is live play uh, for your students and it is phenomenal. We're gonna take another look at engagement tools. And the other engagement tool I wanna show you real quick is leaderboards. Leaderboards are pretty cool. So if you click on leaderboards, you can select who should participate. I want all my students to participate. Select what to record, number of questions, number of correct questions, time spent, number of skills proficient, skills mastered. So I would actually like to select number of skills proficient. And I'm not going to select all subjects. I'm just going to select language arts. I'm not going to select all grades because I'm only uh, connected to eighth graders in this demo account. I can select a start date right now and an end date. So that gives my students a week. The name of the leaderboard is Language Arts Leaderboard. You know what, the language arts teachers would be grumpy with me if I kept that B capitalized, so I'll fix that. Now I'm gonna click Create Leaderboard. All right, and right now I can see that no one has practiced any skills but that's okay because there's still six days, 23 hours, and 59 minutes and 55 seconds left in this leaderboard. All right, I can add a new board too if I wanted to. You can do a board for a class period. You can do a board for 10 minutes. You can do a board for whatever you want. And the more boards you have going, the more chances your students have to win. You can um, assign uh, team points. If you're, if one class is your best class, you can assign team points and uh, let your, uh, you know, VOLZ teams score points uh, using leaderboards. Uh, you can uh, do a leaderboard for bucket filler of the month if you want, um, and we can call it the IXL bucket filler of the month. Uh, the more things you do, the better off uh, your students are going to be, and the more excited they're going to be. Students do like to compete with each other, as I'm sure you are aware. Um, but I really do like the number of skills proficient as a good indicator of IXL learning because the proficient number is actually 80 smart score. And 80 means they've answered the questions enough to be proficient. The number of skills mastered, mastered is only when they get to that 100% on that smart score. And 100% is uh, brutal. It's absolutely brutal. 
you don't want to force your students to get all the way to skills mastered because it's just uh, it's too much. It's not fair to them. Um, if you have students that are truly excelling, you can say, all right, I want you to master this skill. But for the most part, proficient skills, that's going to get you to your uh, number four on NJSLA. I highly recommend you shoot for proficient skills when you are um, setting up leaderboards or when you are uh, trying to set a, a goal for your students to obtain. 80 smart score is the way to go, not 100. So here is the most valuable thing that IXL offers. And I don't say that lightly because I think they have a lot of great stuff. Um, a ton of teachers are using IXL for practice, for uh, reinforcement, for skill um, acquisition. It's a great program. But I think what IXL does best, probably better than anything else, is going to be here in the assessment tab. And this is the real-time diagnostic. So if you look here, this student has uh, a 690 in fractions, which means he's almost at the seventh grade level on fractions. He's got a 740 for al algebra and algebraic thinking. He's got a 780 for numbers and operation. A 230 for geometry, so that's certainly a weak point. Uh, measurement, uh, po highest possible level for this strand. And data, statistics, and probability, three recommended skills here, 670. So you can look and see what this student needs to work on. And see this little BRK? That's a three digit code that you can use when you are setting up a group jam. So if you notice that a lot of your students need help on fractions, you can just type BRK into um, your search window for a group jam, and then you can do whole class, um, basic, basically that Kahoot style game uh, for everybody to work on fractions together. Right. Multiply and divide positive and negative fractions. There you go, 2B5, that's another code you can use. So you can use that for those jams. Um, algebra and algebraic thinking, right? 9-4-Q. Those are recommended skills. Language arts. Now, language arts is a little bit different. See how um, in um, math up here, all of these are stars? These stars mean that this student has spent enough time in the diagnostic to be um, given actual scores. Whereas he only has, the student only has um, reading strategies a star. Vocabulary, writing strategies, and grammar and mechanics are still being tested. That's why it looks like that. Um, but you, you still see the same kind of stuff here. It's a super um, useful um, tool here. And you can actually print a diagnostic plan for your students. And again, it will show you the two recommended skills or the three recommended skills. Language arts. Remember we said that this student was still kind of testing. That's why you see a range there as opposed to a star like you see here in math. Again, there's an actual star because he was tested enough in reading strategies. Now, how do you get all this amazing data? You get it by sending students into the diagnostic arena. And if you click on student dashboards, you can see what it looks like for your students. So here is a bunch of skills, right? We have main idea, commas, review, right? All this, all this is language arts. And if they step into the arena, after about 30 or 40 minutes, they'll be able to get a good score on pretty much everything. Um, and then if you spend 10 to 15 minutes a week, that diagnostic keeps updating and keeps telling your students how they're doing and how much better they are doing. It, you can actually see the growth. 
Um, on the student's dashboard, again, you can see this week they've answered 66 questions. That's 14 more than last week. They've spent only an hour and six minutes, so that's 48 minutes down from the weekly average. But with 14 more questions, that's pretty good. You've made progress in three skills um, this week. So that's one up from his average. All right, and it's showing, this is the leaderboard that we set up earlier. It's showing that he has not mastered, or I'm sorry, gotten proficient in any skills since I set this up uh, 23 minutes ago. So you get a good idea for how things are going here. Um, but you absolutely want your students to step into that diagnostic arena as uh, at, at least 15 minutes a week. And if they don't have their skills organized yet, if they're not actually in there, you want to make sure that they um, absolutely must uh, do that first 30 or 40 minutes to get that initial diagnostic settled because then you can really see what's happening. You can click on, once you, once you have a good amount of information, you can click on trouble spots right here in analytics. And here I can see that all of my out of all of my students, 15 or more students will benefit from helping at this skill, right? Five or more students will benefit from this skill. All right, relative flaws, a positive, right? These are all questions that a lot of students are missing. 